Today we're here at Sotheby's Australia to have a look at a watch collection. In many ways, it's a collection like any other. It's been assembled over a long time to mark key milestones and to remind the owner of special moments in their lives. Unlike other collections, the owner in this case is an incredible actor, an Academy Award winner, and one of Australia's favourite adopted sons. I am talking, of course, about Russell Crowe. I'm here with Hamish Sharma, Sotheby's Australia's Head of Jewels, and we're here talking about a very interesting and maybe unusual auction. Hamish, what's this auction called? Russell Crowe, The Art of Divorce. And what's it about? Well, this is an unusual theme. It sure is unusual. This is a, um, an effort on, on Russell's part. Um, I think he's moving into a new phase in his life. So it's a spring clean on a celebrity scale, really? I suppose that's one way of putting it. <laughs> and how big is this, this auction overall? And, and how many watches are we talking about here? All right, there's 227 lots in the auction. And out of that, there's 30 watches. Okay. Yes. So, so we don't have time to look at all of them, but let's have a look at a few key lots. And, and rather than, uh, you know, we talk about them, let's leave that to Russell. A lot of stories about me and watches will take place in airports. When I'm either travelling to a job or travelling home from a job, I have a habit of buying a watch that will make me always recall that particular gig. Anyway, so lot 199, it's a funny thing about that particular Panerai because that's my first. I started seeing Panerais, had no experience with them whatsoever until the set of Gladiator. And there was two guys on that set Sven, who played the guy I fought in the Tiger fight, and also Ralph Mueller. They both had gigantic Panerais, you know? And I didn't quite think they were for me, but I did start seeking them out when I was in airport. <laughs> it's funny because I associate this watch completely with Gladiator, probably because I first saw them on the set of Gladiator, but also I would have bought this watch just around the time that I was nominated. And so therefore that would have followed on with uh, a bunch of responsibilities to do with that through that period of time. So I was probably wearing this leading up to the Academy Awards, etc. Lot 200, interesting watch, Breitling. To Super Ocean, I bought that <laughs> in the airport in Sydney. I was on my way to New Orleans to make the movie Broken City and I was going to be playing the mayor of New York and usually what happens with your props departments and stuff, especially if you're arriving late into a production like I was, they're only going to have a certain limited selection. And uh, I just thought that, you know, that character should have something at some stage, at least during the film, which really popped. And there's often a difference between a prop watch and a real watch, um, which I try to always wear real watches when I can in a movie because a prop watch tends to be quite dull. Um, because, you know, even though it might be the right shape, they tend to be fakes. So uh, I got that, and you can definitely see it in Broken City where I'm wearing, when I'm wearing it. It definitely pops and it did the trick. Um, beautiful watch. Love wearing it, actually. 202. I'd seen one of these through course of people I'd met or what have you. It's a Breitling, but it's stamped with the SAS Who Dares Wins badge, and I think it's a, a limited edition of that and uh, I actually purchased it in Manchester. I was in Manchester um, to watch the Costa Zoo Ricky Hatton fight and I was with some friends who are currently serving and former servicemen and what have you and I don't know who just must, must have wanted cash or something the bloke had bought it from. Anyway, he was very enthusiastic about selling it on to me and because it had that symbol on it, I thought it was pretty cool so I bought it. Lot 203, um, now that's a Yacht Master, Rolex Yacht Master. I wore that quite a lot in uh, 2003, 2004 probably. I bought it after the shoot of Master and Commander, so that means I probably bought it in 2002, sorry, but then I ended up dating it in 2003 because that's when the movie would have come out. It's actually engraved on the back. I've got some watches that are engraved specifically with the movie that I was doing when I bought the watch 
and that one has got block engraving on the back, says Master and Commander 2003. So lot 206, I was in Rome and um, I went shopping with my wife-to-be, I think. Ended up going into Cartier. I, I can't remember what I bought, a pair of earrings or something like that, you know. And I think part of the ploy is to make you think, oh, maybe I should get something else while I'm here, which uh, on this particular occasion, it worked in their favor. It just sat very nicely on uh, my wrist, so uh, I bought it. But the funny part about that watch is I came out of the store, the entire street was just blocked with people. So there was all these policemen around and everything. I just went up to the first one that was there and I was like, hey man, you know, you speak in English or whatever. What's going on, you know? And uh, in very sort of broken English, she said to me, you, Mr. Gladiator, you are going on. So I was like, oh, really? So I sort of like put my hand up and waved and all the street went crazy and stuff. It was like, oh, okay. So in 2004, I formed a company with another fellow called Peter Holmes at Court. I'm going to talk about lot 207 now. And um, that company would go on to be the company that purchased the South Sydney Rugby Leagues Club and then, uh, of course, took South Sydney to a premiership first time in 43 years in 2014. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I ended up buying Peter a watch to celebrate the fact that we'd formed the company. And, and while I was in the middle of that purchase, the guy that I was buying that, that particular watch off said, I've got this really cool gold Rolex Daytona and it was kind of like one of those watches that I'd always thought I'd get but I'd never had until that point. Anyway, so I ended up buying it and that one again is um, engraved on the back uh, Blackhawk PRTRC FAC October 1st 2004 and that is as I said to celebrate the beginning of the company that went on to buy South Sydney. So lot 2014 at Speedmaster Ron Howard gave me one of those, uh, and he kind of gave me an earlier generation. And I kind of was looking at it, and I thought it was so cool. But I love the story behind it as well, that it was the watch taken to the moon. And I think the, the one that Ron gave me was an earlier generation one. And so I ended up giving it away to my brother, because he's not really a watch wearer, but I thought if he was ever going to wear a watch, the watch that went to the moon would probably be the one it want. And then later on, I saw one again and I kind of replaced it in my collection. So lot 221. I was in Iceland, in Reykjavik, and uh, just a very rare day off during the shooting of Noah. And I was just walking down the street and I sort of went into this place and there on the sort of... Uh, display was a watch, you know, that represented Iceland, an Icelandic design watch and what have you, so I, I bought one. Um, it's a very simple watch, but it sits very nicely on the wrist and it wears very well. Just flipping through here, the Cellini 217, I got that when I was making American Gangster. I'd always uh, admired Cellinis, but I don't know, maybe they, were, they hadn't released one for a while or something, but because they were never around. So when I saw that one, I got it. It is a beautiful watch to wear. And uh, a little bit of a heartbreaker to see that one go. <laughs> Lot 213. Uh, I was going to the premiere of a movie called The Man with the Iron Fists, which was directed by RZA, and we shot it in uh, China. And the premiere was in New York City. It was around the time I was shooting uh, still shooting Noah and uh, we were doing the, the Long Island section of that shoot so I was living in New York and it was about a week before Hurricane Sandy but I thought to celebrate that particular opening night I should really bling it up and <laughs> that was the watch I bought for the, the evening. So lot 218, possibly the most expensive watch in this lot again it is a beautiful watch to wear and uh, it's a limited edition and what have you. 2005, I've just finished shooting A Good Year with Ridley Scott, so this would associate to that film. Um, but I also had a little bit of a problem. I had to go and sort out in New York City on the way back home. So I think I was in London for a few days, but I bought it around that time and I wore that watch when I went to court in New York on the 1st of November. 
2005. Lot 198. Uh, I would have bought this at the same time as I bought Lot 199, not exactly the same time, but a little bit after. Once I was into the whole Panerai thing, it led to a bit of a rash of Panerai buying over that period of time. Uh, and a few of which I, I, I've still got. I have a Radimir Platinum that I've worn through two leather bands on, and uh, it's on its third leather band. And I was doing a bit of scuba diving around the time I, I bought this in uh, various places. And it's just a great watch. I choose watches the same way every time. It's how they feel when they sit on the wrist. Now sometimes that feeling is only there for a day or a short period of time and other times, you know, every time you address that watch, you put it on, you know exactly why you bought it. And there's definitely a feel-good factor for me with a watch. You know, if I'm wearing something that I really like, then, you know, all is right with the day <laughs> to some degree.